Now we've seen in the meetings some unusual manifestations as the hand of God comes on people. People come to me and say, well that's the devil. I said, you don't know God. If you think that's the devil, you have more faith in the devil's ability to come into a Holy Ghost service and do things. I've got more faith in Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. Can you say amen? Rodney Howard Brown. Long, 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 long time friend of mine. If you close your eyes and put your eyes on Jesus, the Lord will come touch you. I'm telling you. And then you'll be mocked. You'll be mocked. You will never be able to get rid of it. So I ministered, it was fun, we had just, just a great time, and Rodney Howard, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown spoke on Friday night, and I got undone, man. Dr. Brown came over, he was touching people, it was a mess, and I was just sitting there, and he puts his hand on my arm, and he went, you made it through the fire. But something came in in my stomach, and like, how old are you? Huh? 13, what's your name? The hand of God's on you. Five God's on you. God's gonna use you. Power! I also listen to Rodney Howard Brown because he challenges me and he makes me think about things in a new way. I find that Rodney feeds me. You'll be mocked. You will never be able to get rid of it. Hello everyone, welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. Today we're gonna to be talking about Rodney Howard Brown. And folks, I'm gonna warn you, right at the beginning, this is going to be a difficult episode to get through because the clips that I'm gonna show you are very disturbing. In these clips, you're gonna see Rodney Howard Brown um, doing what he does to adults in his um, service, services, if that's what you wanna call them. Uh, to children. And, and you're also going to see him uh, teaching the prosperity gospel to children as well, um, grooming them to believe for whatever they want and to sow seed into the ministry so that they can receive things like a new Nintendo Switch, um, new tennis shoes, things like that. Evil, evil, evil stuff that you are about to witness. But I do hope that you'll be able to hold your nose and get through this so that if you know anyone who is caught up in this whole Rodney Howard Brown scene, that uh, you can send them this video and warn them. I received some information from uh, James Eppolito. Um, I didn't know who James was until a few days ago, um, but uh, he actually had some, he's the one that gave me these clips. Uh, he, he, he sent them to me. And James and I had a, a good conversation, pretty long conversation uh, this morning, and uh, talked about this stuff. James was caught up in this movement. Um, and what we are actually, what, what we are actually going to be witnessing with these children is this thing called Kids Fire Week, River Tampa. And um, so this is a place where parents send their children. Rodney Howard Brown's there. All of his adult teachers are there grooming these children. And it just, again, it's, it's, it's spiritual child abuse is exactly what this stuff is. I want to read just a little bit of the email that uh, James sent me because I think it will be eye-opening. Now, James almost sent his kids to this thing. He actually, him and his wife actually had them registered. They were already registered the day before this thing took place. He said it, something just didn't feel right, and he, 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 he pulled them out. He said, you know, they're, they're, they're not going. And so good thing that he did that. But I want to read uh, some of the email that he sent. This is what it says in the email. They split the kids into two age groups, and this is the younger group starting at three years of age. Um, and I and I believe he's he's talking about uh, the, the the well you'll see in the clip um, I've got a clip of this um, he says um, parents were not allowed in so many of them have no idea about the reality 
of what was happening. And unfortunately, many of the parents have been indoctrinated into this terrible cult. I also heard that they have the kids fill out a survey asking them what kind of material items they want. I imagine that they do that so they can make a Nintendo Switch supernaturally appear to a kid who sowed a seed. So seed faith theology being taught to the kids. Now, just in case you don't know who Rodney Howard Brown is, um, yeah, I, I've done, Robin and I have done videos that um, kind of give the history of Rodney Howard Brown. And uh, I will put uh, a video at the end of this, a card at the end of this video so that you can actually, uh, if you if you want more information. But I'll just, I'm just going to give you kind of a thumbnail sketch here uh, of who Rodney Howard Brown actually is. In 1993, Carl Strader, a pastor in the Assemblies of God, invite, invited Rodney Howard Brown to hold revival meetings at Carpenter's home church in Lakeland, Florida. The church can seat 10,000, but at this point, the congregation numbers less than 2,000. Strader arranges broadcasts of the meetings on radio and TV, and within a month, nightly services are attracting an average 8,000 people. Some such services last until 2 a.m. By the end of Howard Brown's visit, it is estimated that 100,000 people had attended from a wide range of countries in, Af in Africa, South America, and Europe. And so this is a clip at the Carpenter's Home Church, 1993, Rodney Howard Brown, right as uh, he's getting really famous with uh, the whole laughing revival thing. Watch this. We want to let you know that you're listening to the service live from the Carpenter's Home Church here in Lakeland, Florida. Right now, evangelist Rodney Howard Brown is ministering to the audience. He is actually walking through the audience, calling people out of the audience. And as he says the word filled, he is talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. When they lift their hands, he speaks the word, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they're being slain right there in their seats, some of them falling into the aisles, some of them on their face, some of them on their back, all of them being hit with holy laughter. It's exciting. We take you now back live to the service at the Carpenter's Home Church with evangelist Rodney Howard Brown as the revival continues. Nowhere in Scripture is holy laughter even a thing. Nowhere. You won't find it in the Bible. The Holy Spirit, He doesn't cause people to um, fall on their faces laughing uncontrollably. Um, now, Howard Brown was also very instrumental in the Toronto Blessing, and that's because of Randy Clark. Randy Clark's actually the one that got the, got the thing rolling, the Toronto Bless ro Blessing rolling. But Rodney Howard Brown is instrumental because he gave the impartation to Randy Clark. Close to a nervous breakdown, having pursued a tough but relatively unfruitful ministry at Vineyard Christian Fellowship in St. Louis, Missouri, Randy Clark attended a Rodney Howard Brown meeting at Kenneth Hagin's Rama Bible Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is initially skeptical of both the laughter and the falling, which characterize, uh, which characterize the event. He is also seriously troubled by the word faith context. Despite this, Clark senses God rebuking him and telling him, quote, you have a denominational spirit. How badly do you want to be touched afresh? End quote. And here is Randy Clark telling the story himself. His name was Rodney Howard Brown. You went to his meeting because you were just plain desperate for, you had tasted God, but you wanted what you had previously tasted, but you wanted more. And, right. uh, and so I understand you were fasting, you were seeking God. You go right. to this meeting and he puts his hand on you. Fire, lightning, uh, Moses, what no. happened? It's actually different because in the earlier impartation I received, through uh, the guy prayed for me. Actually, he didn't even touch me. He just prayed from the from the platform. I felt fire, electricity, shook. Uh, Were you scared? Uh, yes, because I was. Ne <laughs> I never felt more than tears when I feel God's love. I would yes. get teary eyed, but I never felt power like this, and that was scary. And then in '89, that was '84, '89. I had an experience where I, I was afraid I was going to die. The power was so strong that I literally was fearful I was going to die. From did you death. ask God to stop the power? No, I knew I, did. I didn't want to ask Him to stop, but I said, God, you're scaring me. I don't think you want to kill me, but are you aware that you turn up the power, you, I'm afraid you're going to. And, but this was 90, 
summer of 93. And I was expecting a similarity to that, right. but it didn't happen. I just fell down. I couldn't stand up anymore. And I thought, well, this is psychological suggestion because I don't feel any electricity, any power, any heat, any energy. But when I tried to get up, I couldn't. You could not physically get off the ground once yeah. you were down. Wait, did you try? Yes. And, and what would happen? You just... N nothing. You just felt like a, a tremendous weight was, was, was on me. And I, and I realized, that I, and it had been the things of God enough to know that I shouldn't resist this. I should mm. yield, uh, yield but, to but it. But if you had resisted, do you think you could have just got up? Uh, not the first one. The others, I, the others I could. It was different. The other four times he prayed for me, I, f I couldn't stand up. I felt, but I could have got up qu uh, quicker. quicker. That first time, I was probably there a long time. Okay, your first meeting after you get back, mm -hmm. what happened and people in front of you? All heaven broke loose. What do you mean? Uh, people had never fallen down when I prayed for them in the eight-year history of my church. And this, every person we prayed for would, would just fall. What causes them to fall down? They can't stand up. Well, that's the logical thing. Yeah. But what is pushing them down? Yeah, the presence of God. Okay, um, from this point forward, the clips are going to be really disturbing. But again, I just would ask you to hold your nose and just try to get through them. In this clip, you're going to be seeing Rodney Howard Brown praying for, praying for. Th what he's doing is not prayer. He's not praying for children. But he calls it praying for 13-year-old kids, 13-year-old children. Watch this. I tell you, let, let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. I want to pray for 13 year olds. All 13 year olds, come line up. Come. 13. 13. Come. Don't put them on top of each other. Stand them up side by side. Line them up across the plate. Listen to me. Look at me. The hand of God's on you in a powerful way. God's sealing that here tonight. Now, in Jesus' name, upon your life, in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, yeah, in the name of the Lord, in the name, in the name of Jesus, now, from the top of your head, now, fire, the fire. Fire! 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 I know that was difficult to watch, but I appreciate you getting through it. It's something that all of us need to see because this is what they are doing to the kids. And remember, in the email that James Eppolito sent me, he said that parents were not allowed in to this event. They weren't allowed in. They were to just hand their children off to Rodney Howard Brown and his cronies to do that to them in the name of Jesus. Now, Rodney Howard Brown is blaspheming Christ. He is taking the name of God in vain because he is using the name of Christ for greed and for gain. Uh, this next, the next few clips is um, a teacher. I am not sure who this is, to be honest with you, but he is one of the teachers in this event. He's teaching children seed faith doctrine. Watch this. Let me ask you a question, boys and girls. Is there anybody in this room that's believing God for something? Can I tell you something that you can actually believe God 
And he will come through for you because that's who he is. He's a generous God. He's a miracle working God. He's your heavenly father. Can I get an amen? But you have to understand something, boys and girls. When you have something that's little and you put it in the master's hand and you pour it out and you give it onto Jesus, guess what God's going to do? He's going to multiply it. Because God is a God of multiplication. He's a God that adds things to you. The Bible says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Come on, who knows that scripture? Anybody? Come on, seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So that tells you that God wants to add it to you and multiply it back to you. Isn't that amazing? He's a good God. But you have to understand something. You have to pour it. You have to sow it. Remember, every harvest has a what? A seed. If I want a sunflower, what do I need to sow, boys? A seed. You sow a seed, you're going to get a harvest. It's very simple. It's very basic. But when you do it, you got to remember Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given back to you. Come on, good measure, press down, shaking together and running over in the same measure that you give. God says, I will give it back unto you, right? So how do you think Jesus feels about little children? Compared to how Rodney Howard Brown and his disciples feel about little children. Well, let me just remind you how Jesus feels about little children. This is an incident in the Gospel of Mark where the disciples were rebuking people for bringing children to Jesus. This is what it says. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Now, if you thought the last clip was bad, wait till you see what's in this clip. Come on, who needs some breakthrough tonight? Who's believing God for like a Nintendo Switch? Who's believing God for an Xbox or a PS4 or a new bicycle or a scooter? Come on. Who's believing for something? Listen, you can go to your Heavenly Father, but you have to remember something, boys and girls. God is looking for obedience. Turn to your neighbor and say, obedience. Obedience. He's looking for obedience. Let me ask you a question, boys and girls. Who wants to do it God's way? Anybody want to do it God's way? Because when you do it His way, blessings will flow to you. But when you're disobedient and you don't do exactly what God says, will blessings flow? No, because disobedience is sin. God doesn't bless disobedience. He blesses obedience. First time, right away, that's God's way. Who wants to do it God's way? Then you got to do it first time. You got to do exactly what he says. And when you do it, blessings are going to come looking for you. We looked at a passage in Mark where Jesus rebuked his disciples because the parents were bringing their children to them, and the disciples were trying to turn the children away, rebuking the parents. And Jesus was indignant with his disciples and rebuked them for it. But Jesus is harsher to people who cause little children to sin. And some passages, they call Jesus says they caused them to stumble. That's what this man is doing to these children. I, again, I don't know who this disciple of Rodney Howard Brown is, but I do know what he is doing. He's causing these little children to stumble because he's causing them to believe a false gospel. He's causing them to believe in something that isn't true. And that is sin. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18, verses 5 through 6. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, which is exactly what this guy is doing. 
this is evil. This is absolutely evil. Now, this next clip is a young lady, young girl. Well, she's probably 12, 13 years old. She's going to stand up in front of these kids and she's going to talk about how being obedient and sowing seed allowed her to be blessed by God with a Nintendo Switch. Watch this. When you work the Word of God, the Word is going to work for you. Can I get an amen? But you have to remember, it's not about the amount that you have in your hand. Even if you have a little oil in your house, go get it. Do exactly what God says to do. Pour it out. And as you keep pouring, guess what? Multiplication will keep coming. Increase will keep coming. Come on, miracles will keep coming. Who's believing God for some new shoes? Then you need to do exactly what the Lord says to do. Remember, God's not trying to take something from you. He's trying to get something to you. For example, where's Gabby at? Is Gabby Santana in the building? Gabby, come up here real quick. She's got a powerful testimony about how she worked the Word of God and how she applied it. And guess what? Tell us what happened to you. Hello, everybody. I'm Gabby, and I was believing for a Nintendo Switch, and um, I was sewing towards it, and I was believing the Lord for it. Every time I would pray, I would be like, Lord, you know I'm believing for a Nintendo Switch. I pray that I'll get one. And um, it was my birthday coming up, and um, I was like, okay, if I don't get a Nintendo Switch here, I'm just going to keep believing for it, but I really hope I do get one. And um, like Pastor Jordan was saying, when you see God, then um, he will give you what you're believing for. And every time that you sow, it always comes back more, and he always expands what you're um, giving. And so the day on my birthday... Um, my dad told me to open a box, but it did. It wasn't like an attempt. It was a box that said foam on it. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to open a box of foam for my dad, you know. And he was telling me, he's like, I've been believing for, not believing. He was like, I've been wa needing these foam for a long time. I've been waiting for it for months, and it's finally here. And so I grabbed the knife to open it, and I pulled um, out, like, a piece of paper. And there was literally a Nintendo Switch right there in the box. And... Um, it was the exact one I was believing for, and so, praise God, and also, I was believing for a backpack, and it was a specific FJ All Raven Kankin backpack, and I, somebody blessed me with that too, and I got the exact same one that I was believing for, so, yeah. Come on, give the Lord some praise. That's who He is. He's a miracle-working God. He is a generous God, and He wants to bless you. So these kids are not being taught that they are sinners in desperate need of a Savior and that Christ bled and died for them, longs to forgive them. They're not being taught to love and serve their neighbor. What they're being taught in this conference is the prosperity gospel, a false gospel, that you can use God to gain material things like backpacks and new sneakers and all this other kind of stuff. This, this stuff is bad. I want to remind you of what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, 6 through 9, about people who preach a false gospel. And we've read this passage before, but it's worth reading again. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you. Let him be accursed. That word accursed there is the Greek word anathema. The SV, I mean the uh, NIV translates that, let him be eternally condemned. And that's a, that's a pretty good translation for that, that word. Let him be accursed. Let him be anathema. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. This man is teaching a different gospel. Rodney Howard Brown is teaching a different gospel. And Rodney Howard Brown is doing the same exact thing um, with the older kids as well. Watch this. Come here. Come here, sweetie. Now this will go for all of you. Look at me. How old are you? 13. 13. And you? 13. And you, of course. Okay. If you believe this, by the time you guys are 18, 19, 20, you'll be walking in the supernatural realm of provision. 
that all of the adults around you will look at you and just be totally shocked. Why? Because God honors his word. That's the fire of God on you and the fire of God on you and the fire of God on you for supernatural blessing and provision and prosperity from this day on. You'll see it. Hallelujah. And that goes for every other person that is hungry and thirsty for God here in this place. And you that are watching by way of television, God is raising up an army of men and women in this hour that are not dependent upon men, that are not dependent upon the governments, that are not dependent upon the bankers of the world. They depend on Almighty God, El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough, the all-sufficient one, the God of plenty, and he's a way maker. He can come more kick, more placanda, rakosandre, ripatandre, supraya, water from the rock, oil, oil that will never run dry, the meal that will never fail, text money from a fish's mouth, water turned to wine, loaves and fishes multiplied. Everywhere you go, you see the miraculous, supernatural provision of God. And it's got nothing to do with your bank account and how much money you have in your bank account because the blessing you walk in cannot be put in the banks. Hallelujah. Glory a Dios. You have access to wealth that the others have no act. They don't even understand. They can't even comprehend. I have often wondered how teachers like Rodney Howard Brown can sleep at night. But I finally know how they can because the Bible says that men like Rodney Howard Brown their consciences are seared as with a hot iron. They are so callous that it doesn't even bother them that they are exploiting not just adults, but children. Children. Rodney Howard Brown is an evil man. He's a cult leader. And he needs to be marked and avoided and I hope, first of all, let me, let me thank you, <laughs> first of all, those of you who have um, been able to stomach this and, and watch this all the way through. Uh, you're very brave. Thank you for doing that. Also, I want to thank James um, Epolito again for sending me the material, because my hope is that those of you who know people caught up in this movement will be able to share this video and hopefully uh, this will, will help others. So thanks for watching. God bless. Lord willing, we'll see you next week.